South Africa's highest court has restrained former President Jacob Zuma from running for parliament in the upcoming elections which are set to take place next week. Now the Constitutional Court ruled that his 15-month prison sentence for contempt of court disqualifies him. Now this comes after former president uh, refused to appear before the inquiry looking into corruption allegations that state capture uh, allegations which ended in 2018 resulted in his conviction in uh, 2021. Hi to Dumelan, good evening. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Joining us tonight uh, on this episode is Sum Konto Asizu Houteng spokesperson and that's MK Party spokesperson Bafala Katmatani and he's here to help us make sense of all that has been happening in and around the political party and also as they recently launched uh, their uh, People's Manifesto this past weekend. Mr. Matlani, much appreciated. Matlabe, much appreciated for coming in uh, this evening. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Um, I, I think maybe let's start the conversation by, you know, what's been happening. The Constitutional Court yesterday ruling that uh, the former president eligible to contest uh, for the elections, but the IEC has released the statement that um, his face will remain on the um, ballot paper, but his name will be removed from the national list. Maybe let's get your reaction first on that. Well, good evening. Uh, let's greet uh, the viewers at home. Um, our, our immediate response as Umkonto Siswe is that um, nothing changes out of this uh, ruling of the Constitutional Court simply because we believe that there's been a number of attempts to try and get us uh, out of the uh, running for the elections for the provincial and national elections. However, all the attempts have failed dismally so because if you count, there was a first attempt, the second and the third, and this one was going to be the fourth one, and three of them we won them uh, without any doubt, precisely because we believe that um, the reasons that they were forwarding for us not to partake in the elections were actually flimsy. And um, it changes nothing more than being a academic legal exercise, yeah. to say the least. Precisely because we also do not even understand what was the interest of uh, IEC in appealing the matter to the Concord. You know, reason being, from a logical point of view, if you put a dispute before the Electoral Commission, be, which is supposed to oversee the election and nothing else. The person that is aggrieved was supposed to be the one that takes the matter for appeal. But for some strange reason, we see IEC taking an interest in the matter and having taken the matter to the Concord. And the basis in which they did that, they were saying they wanted clarity. You know, in terms of legal processes, you don't seek clarity, but you, you work according to the judgment and what the court have pronounced on. In any event, we're saying nothing changes. The status quo remains because President Jacob Zuma is still the leader of Um Kondoisizwe Party. He is still going to be on the ballot. As we speak, he is on the mm -hmm. ballot. And the people of South Africa are going to vote for Um Kondoisizwe on the 29th of May with the leader of Um Kondoisizwe being President Jacob Zuma. I mean, Mr. Maklabi, you're saying that uh, the IEC, um, you know, its duty is just to run the elections. Uh, that's it. But the Constitutional Court feels that uh, actually they were within their rights to, uh, you know, seek clarity on uh, Section 47.1e, uh, particularly looking at the eligibility there of, um, uh, 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 of, of, of the former president. But the, the, your party is saying that um, six of the judges that the Constitutional Court uh, they should have recused themselves because uh, some, somehow they are conflicted in the matter. Indeed, uh, precisely because this matter has got a, a historical uh, background to it. And that background is the one that stems out of a process of a commission of inquiry, which was chaired by the current uh, Chief Justice uh, Zondo, mm. whom we believe that he's highly conflicted in the matter, including those justices that had made certain pronounce, pronouncements previously. And you would have noted that we did raise the matter to say uh, some of them already had a, held a view and uh, had a position insofar as uh, President Jacob Zuma is concerned. And in this country, there is a narrative that has been driven to present him as this corrupt person. Uh, and, and now we are actually almost 15 years 
uh, before the courts where there is nothing, even one single thing that has been proven to that effect. So we believe that this is nothing but a Zuma law, you know, uh, mm -hmm. because he's actually the first person under democracy to be uh, presided over and judged and sentenced by the Constitutional Court without even the normal due processes. That is why this section 47 uh, 1E uh, uh, that is being um, said to be the basis in which this decision is taken, it's yeah. actually flawed itself in the sense that they are applying it selectively, you know. For instance, our advocate uh, Talimpov did indicate in the previous appearances that that section it only applies to people who have been processed accordingly in terms of the law. One of which is a person must stand before the judge, a person must plead, a person must be given a chance if sentenced to appeal the matter. And in these circumstances, all of them, he never stood before the judge. He was subs uh, I mean, sentenced in absentia. Number two, he never pleaded guilty or not guilty. Number three, he was never given an option of, uh, of appeal. However, they choose that those elements of the same section applies to him, even though they did not follow it to the latter themselves. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we actually, in, the, in, in, in a way, we were faced with a constitutional crisis in this country that the same constitutional court, it finds itself in a predicament because it becomes a reverie and a player at the same time. Just uh, before we go for an ad break, uh, in brief, what happens now? Um, um, uh, uh, since now we know that the former president will be uh, on the ballot papers there, um, are you taking the matter forward as MK party? Um, you know, uh, in terms of, I mean, you've been saying that, look, um, uh, what you need is just two thirds majority so that you can be able to change the constitution because somewhere, somehow it is infringing on the rights of South Africans. That, that is our position uh, as a party, uh, being MK party that uh, we are faced with a constitutional crisis in the sense that the base of our laws in the country, they are based on some concept called Roman Dutch law, you know, which is very foreign to who we are as Africans. We believe that as MK party, maybe we need to go back to the drawing boards where if we, we actually, when we win the, the elections with two thirds majority, one of our assertion is that we are going to change the constitution. Amongst other things, we want to make a total overhaul of the judiciary to suit the circumstances that uh, uh, we are living in as Africans. So we want to introduce in the main the African law to say, look, you are telling us about the Roman Dutch law, but this is Africa, you know, and why can't we implement laws that speaks to us as Africans, you know, and there is also a narrative that is being uh, driven around to say we've got the best constitution, constitution in the world. That thing is not what we are saying, it's what we are told, and this thing was actually trumped upon us to a point where we believe it, that this is the best constitution in the world. My, our our, our, our uh, contention, point of contention is that if this is the best constitution in the world, why is it that is not favoring the poor of the poorest and the working class of our society? Why there is so much division in terms of the poor and the rich? Mr. Maklave, we're going to take a quick ad break. When you come back, I want us to get into the manifesto, uh, you know, your key priorities as a party as we are a week away to the elections. Let's take a quick ad break. We're coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still watching So to Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tabo Mulukwani. Tonight we are in conversation with Bafana Mashabi, who is the Harding Provincial Spokesperson for Umkonto Esizwe uh, Political Party, and he's here to discuss matters relating to it. Mr. Mashabi, much appreciated for staying on. Let's talk about your key priorities. I mean, you launched, uh, you know, the uh, how. People say that it's the manifesto, but obviously the party has a way of saying yes, it. Yes. Um, what are the key priorities? I know that uh, you are sitting at eight priorities as a party. Yes. Look, as MK Party, we launched our People's Mandate. We call it the People's Mandate. And the reason why we call it the People's Mandate, it is because we've actually touched base with uh, all sectors of society in the run-up to the formulation of the People's Mandate itself. So amongst other things, we are looking at the issue of the land. We are saying, um, the land must be returned to its original owners, you know, and the issue of the land cannot be tackled as one of those uh, by the way issues, but it must be at the center of the freedom of our people. So the land is one area that we're going to look at. We're also saying that we should also revisit the issue of how we run the country, meaning that 
we must also reintroduce the importance of the leadership of traditional leaders, you know, because basically the land belongs to the people and, the, and the, the traditional leaders are the ones who are overseeing the land on behalf of the people. Therefore, as some controversies were saying, the, the importance of traditional leaders must also be elevated and we must work with all the stakeholders of our society, including yeah. the religious groupings. So this is the issue of the land, is the issue of the traditional leadership, but we're also talking about the issue of education. We're saying free education must not be a cosmic Thing. It must actually be one of the fundamentals that our government is going to tackle. Uh, the issue of free education, we're saying that it must start from foundation phase up to the first degree, you know, wherein a, an African child is going to be supported and protected through a free education so that uh, we have a society where we are not creating dependency but we are creating self-sufficiency, you know. In that sense, if we have free education, we'll also be dealing with the issue of economic disparity at the same time. Because the more people are educated, is the more that they can take care of themselves and the state does not have to carry the burden of, of, of supporting people, you know. So do you have a number, like for instance, in terms of the jobs? I mean, everyone has been, uh, you know, throwing figures around that we're going to create five yeah, million look, jobs and stuff. We, we, we don't want to go into that fray. Mm -hmm. the, the reason being simple is that People are making very uh, funny in, uh, promises to people. You know, for instance, I'll make an example with the ruling party. They are saying they are going to create 2.5 million jobs in the next com coming five years. They've been in power for 30 years. You know, and as we speak, last week uh, it was reported that unemployment rate is sitting at 32 point something percent. And at the same time, South African Post Services is shedding jobs. Yeah. More than 200 post offices are closing in the country. Now, this is a sharp contradiction. You can't say you are going to create 2 point something million jobs when in the current situation you are actually shedding jobs, you're not creating jobs. So we are saying as MK Party, one of the issues that we're going to focus on is to build the economy because we believe that there's a close correlation between a job creation and economic uh, growth. So we're growing the economy so that the economy can absorb people into jobs. So it's scientific. You can't create jobs if you're not growing the economy. The percentage and the facts are there to see for everyone that the South African economy has not been growing beyond 1%. It's 0 point something percent. Mm -hmm. So it means that there is somebody who's telling a lie somewhere because scientifically speaking, you can't create jobs if the economy is not growing. So we're going to look at the issue of the economy, we're going to look at the issue of free education, and primarily, you cannot have a functioning economy in an environment where crime is rife. We're also going to confront the issue of crime head on and make sure that our streets are clean and that criminals do not function freely as they do in our just, country. Just lastly, before I let you go, I mean, how confident are you of the two two thirds majority, I mean, uh, people have been, you know, a lot of um, 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 uh, commentary, if I may put it that way. They've been saying that, look, you guys have been a, <laughs> a, a, a KZN party, uh, you know, but we've seen that you've made inroads in various provinces. I mean, you look at um, um, the latest by elections in Madibing yes. uh, municipality. MK, it's 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 it's, it's visible there. Yes, uh, it's in the northwest province. Yes, then it shows that somewhere somehow you are making strides in various provinces. How confident are you? Are you are you sure that you, people will go out and we, vote for it? We are very much confident. Um, even if you go to numbers, but before you go to numbers, let's go to our visibility. We are present in Gauteng, very much so. We are present in KZN, we are present in Pumalanga, we are present in Limpopo. As a matter of fact, we were unveiling one of the new members at Orlando Stadium, mm -hmm. which was full to capacity as well, our manifesto launch, you know, uh, Penny Penny, Penny yeah. Penny uh, Aie. He was Aye. there and he hit the ground running. As we speak, he was rounding the, 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 the city in, in Limpopo and the reception has been very much uh, uh, warm for him and the party. So in principle, we are saying we're very much confident that we'll get this two-thirds majority because we, 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 we rely on the support and the reception that we are getting from our people. And in terms of the numbers, we are comfortable that we'll get the number that we require to get the two-thirds majority. Because the majority of people who are going to vote in controversies are ordinary people. Have you seen the stats that since the last in provincial and national elections, there's a number that has grown uh, substantively. And it has grown because there is a, an introduction of MK Party. Now, people, even those who are saying, I'm not sure if I want to vote, I'm not going to vote. 
Once there was um, controversy, so they then said, now I'm going to vote. Yeah, so we are, we are going to have the, the, yes. And a lot of people are going to be surprised on the performance that um, controversy is going to do. Look, for instance, we're only five months old, but we're able to fill Orlando Stadium. And uh, the doomsayers were saying they won't fill the stadium, but we filled the stadium. Despite all the logistical and challenges that were created by the ruling party for us, they even jammed the, the stadium. That signal should not go out so that we can a stream uh, live from mm. the stadium, you know. Those are some of the tactics that the ruling party was using to circumvent our event. However, we are very much confident that we'll win a two-thirds majority come the 29th of May. Mr. Maklab, I wish we had more time. I'm interested in finding out more about uh, the party since you've la launched the People's Mandate there. But uh, we wish you well, and then we, we hope that we will have you on the show uh, post the elections. Much appreciated for coming in. Thank you very much. That was uh, Bafana Matlabi, who is the Houting Provincial Spokesperson for the Umkonto West Political Party, talking to us about the latest updates on the party, how they plan on, uh, you know, governing uh, South Africa uh, post uh, uh, 29 May, as everyone is gearing up to the elections uh, next week. Let's take a quick ad break. We come back. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tabo Mulukwani. We are almost at the end of the show and have been discussing the Umkonto West Caesar political party matters as well as the recent ruling by the Constitutional Court to bar former President uh, Jacob Zuma from uh, Parliament there. Now let's bring in my guest, it's political analyst Jamie Mighty, who's joining us via Zoom. Jamie, much appreciated for joining us. Welcome to the show. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and... Uh... Good afternoon to your viewers. Much appreciated. I mean, uh, Jamie, the former president will not be running for parliament according to uh, the uh, Constitutional Court's ruling yesterday. Uh, I mean, the center of the uh, whole argument was more on the Section uh, 47.1e. You know, uh, the IEC had actually wanted clarity uh, on that. I, 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 you know, was it really, uh, were we really anticipating that ruling to go that way? Well, um, firstly, I think my anticipation of the ruling was that it would not fully go against Jacob Zuma because um, my assumption was that they would either think that the lack of an appeal provision is one that is, um, you know, that allows him to then be able to attend parliament or that the remission of a sentence in and of itself would be something that they would consider as a reduction of sentence. But uh, the Constitutional Court uh, judges interpreted it differently from what I had interpreted. And fundamentally, they were more concerned about preventing people who are lawbreakers, uh, quote unquote, from being lawmakers. And the purpose, of, the purpose intent of the legislation that they read in was that it does not necessarily create back doors for individuals who are, mm. uh, you know, facing criminal sanctions, even if those criminal sanctions have um, no appeal provision because they happened in the constitutional court. So they took a very um, tough position on it. And I thought that he would win on one of the points, but unfortunately for him, he lost on all of them. I mean, uh, you know, I, I was speaking to the MK party earlier uh, on the show, you know, just to saying that uh, they are actually confident that they will get the two thirds majority and the constitutional court's ruling actually, you know, matters not uh, because uh, the former president will remain on the ballot paper. Do you think somewhere, somehow uh, that will, uh, you know, impact, uh, impact uh, the outcome as we are heading to the elections next week? Well, I, I think that the MK, obviously every political party says that they're going to get two thirds majority. Any political party says that. But the reality is um, they're a brand new party and, you know, they are trying to get some votes uh, from a very contested electoral space. I think that they will probably get above five percent. I don't think that they can get more than 10 percent. But even if they were to get the five, six, seven percent that I think they will get, that will be a serious blow to the ANC. I think that it is a victory for them in any case that Jacob Zuma's face will be on the ballot because he's still the leader of the party as we understand it. And if his face is on the ballot, there are many people who will vote for him who have seen his face um, on, on various ballots over the years and voted for him. So Jacob Zuma enjoys a lot of support 
um, within the ANC ranks proper, and he also in, enjoys a lot of support within the South African public. So they are right when they say that there's a limited impact that the fact that he's going to not going to parliament has on their political outcomes. But the idea of two thirds, I think, is very ambitious. And the reason why I say this is because if you recall when COPE um, ran for elections, their first mm -hmm. election in 2009, they were able to get 7.47% of the vote. And when EFF ran, they got slightly over 6% of the vote. So it's unlikely that, um, you know, even though Jacob Zuma is campaigning for MK, that they will be able to break uh, the trend that we saw from strong contenders which broke away from the ANC looking at COPE and looking at the EFF and the EFF is still uh, a, a, an existing political party right now with 10 years of history and they've just crossed over the 10 percent mark and maybe they'll hit the 15 percent mark it takes time um, to really build a political vehicle that can get those results and even though Jacob Zuma is an experienced politician and they did have strong turnout at their rally I don't think that they can hit two-thirds in my opinion. Jamie, before I let you go, I'm in two questions now. Um, you know, um, what happens now? Uh, obviously, the MK party now will have to uh, somewhere, somehow look for a replacement for the former president, uh, the, uh, you know, for the person to become the, um, uh, the president, for instance, if uh, uh, they get that two thirds majority and, and, and stuff. But um, uh, also, you know, the in, I'm interested in finding out um, how do you see this thing play out? As we're seeing uh, one of the former leaders there, uh, Jovlani Kumalo, uh, saying that uh, he is somewhere, some, somehow going to the courts also to fight this issue. How do we see this playing out? I mean, we're just a week to the, uh, uh, the national and provincial elections. Do we see this having an impact somewhere, somehow? Well, to be honest with you, the first thing is that I think they will choose a leader of the party in parliament if they get some seats. Jacob Zuma can remain the president of the party even if he's not in parliament. If you think about uh, Helen Ziller, she's the chairperson of the federal executive of the DA mm -hmm. and she's not a, a member of parliament. You can occupy leadership positions without being in parliament. They will have to choose a leader to negotiate coalitions, etc. Uh, when it comes to the other debate around the Jablani Kumalo issue. Let's wait and see what the electoral court says. But as things stand right now, I think that we saw who the people of Umkonto Wesizio party view to be their leader. And that is Jacob Zuma, because nobody was looking for Jablani Kumalo at the rally. And if he indeed had a leadership capacity and indeed had a claim to any of those audiences, he would have been able to uh, you know, find uh, expression in that rally. But he does not have any. And I think we've seen this happen sometimes in other African countries where some people have said, no, I own, you know, the MDC party, for example, and then Nelson Chamisa then mm -hmm. goes and starts another thing. At this particular point, even if they called it MKPP, you know, people would still follow Jacob Zuma and not necessarily Jablani Kumalo. So I think the prospects that he has for success is, are not very high in terms of being able to regain control of the party. Jamie, much appreciated. I mean, very interesting developments indeed. We will pay attention to these as they unfold as we are heading to the elections. Much appreciated for coming in. It was a pleasure. Thanks for having me. That was Jamie Mighty, there, who's the political analyst, giving us a political perspective of the implications of former presidents in eligibility to run for parliament after the constitutional court's ruling yesterday. We know that he will be removed from the national list to parliament by the Electoral Commission of South Africa there. Uh, the MK party maintaining that they will definitely get a two thirds majority so that they can be able to change uh, the constitution of South Africa. We'll wait and see after the elections. Well, that's how we wrap up today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to talk to us about this episode. Send us an email at Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za or you can call us, so what's up us is 081-531-8857. Bahai Churidi Rilehulikani from myself, Tabo Mulukwani and the rest of the team. It's good night from us and thank you for watching.